helicopters can be one of the fire managers most useful and versatile tools it is effective and economical however only when used efficiently and safely this short training film is concerned primarily with the factors of safety necessary in a helicopter's operation safety in helicopter operations depends primarily on five main elements the first element is a well-maintained helicopter serviced by an experienced mechanic The second element is a pilot experienced in low altitude flying over mountainous terrain. The third element of safety is a well located and well maintained heliport or a carefully chosen temporary helispot. The fourth element is a heliport or helispot manager. He must be fully trained for his job of supervising the activities and enforcing safety around a helicopter operation. The fifth element of safety is the casual passenger. He must be given thorough and clear instructions on how to enter, ride in, and leave a helicopter safely. Personnel using or maintaining a helicopter should be fully acquainted with all the aspects of safety concerning this valuable and versatile tool. No one should be within 50 feet of the helicopter unless specifically assigned to a task. Passengers should take care never to touch any control in the helicopter accidentally or purposefully. Moving one of the copter's controls could cause a crash. There should be no loose articles in the cab of the helicopter. During flight, such items can easily fall among the controls, jamming them, and possibly causing a crash. There should also be no loose articles around the heliport or helispot. Loose papers or cloth can blow against the intake of a jet-type helicopter and cause a loss of power. Such articles can also jam controls. Provide a covered trash barrel to help handle this problem. All personnel should be thoroughly instructed in the dangers of the two rotors while they are in motion. The main rotor blades can be avoided by crouching low when entering or leaving the ship. The tail rotor blade is not easily seen when in motion. This section of the helicopter should be avoided altogether. Every helicopter operating for the Division of Forestry should have a combination air net, ground net radio to maintain constant contact with other aircraft in the area, with the air traffic manager, and with ground forces. For emergency communication with other aircraft and with airports, the helicopter should also have a Unicom radio. Every helicopter needs periodic maintenance during the day. Provide time for this important operation. The efficiency and safety of any helicopter operation is enhanced by a highly skilled and experienced pilot. The prime rule of any helicopter operation is this. The pilot is the boss at all times. His word is final, on the ground and in the air. He alone is the final authority on the safe use of his helicopter. The pilot should always check the loading of cargo and personnel and the condition of his helicopter before each takeoff. His is the final responsibility. Flying a helicopter on fire duty is a nerve-wracking and tiring job, even for the most experienced pilot. Provide time and insist that he take periodic rests during the day. Near the end of a particularly long day, let him decide when he should stop flying. Do not force him to fly, regardless of the importance of the mission. 
A well-located and well-maintained heliport or a well-chosen helispot selected for temporary use is a necessity for safe helicopter operations. Heliports and helispots should preferably be located on prominent knobs. The direction of drop-off should permit the helicopter to take off into the prevailing wind. There should be at least 50 feet of clearance around the helicopter, preferably more. The pad on which the helicopter rests should have a solid base and should be located on the highest elevation of the clearing. The area should be paved or oiled with no loose soil or rocks to be blown around by the blast of the rotor blades. If the heliport or helispot is not paved, it should be wetted down frequently to prevent flying rocks and dirt from endangering personnel. A windsock is necessary to provide the pilot with the information he needs to land and take off into the wind. In emergencies, any cloth flagging mounted on a pole will do the job. A fire extinguisher should be provided. No smoking signs should be posted. Smoking is not to be permitted within 50 feet of the helicopter or refueling area, nor while flying in the ship. Clean fuel is an absolute necessity. If there is doubt about its cleanliness, the fuel should be filtered through a chamois skin. A well-trained heliport or helispot manager can greatly reduce costs, increase efficiency, and help assure safety of a helicopter operation. He can relieve the pilot of many physical jobs, such as supervising fueling, wetting down heliports, and erecting a windsock. There is an art to packing cargo correctly around the center of gravity of the helicopter. A trained man can do this job safely and quickly so that it needs only checking by the pilot. A heliport manager can provide the needed close supervision of all personnel around a helicopter operation. He can give instructions to the casual passenger and supervise his safety. The helicopter manager must also maintain regular contact with helicopters in flight and with the air traffic manager who coordinates all aircraft activity on the fire. The large number of low flying aircraft on some fires can be a real safety hazard and helicopters are to be dispatched only after clearance has been obtained. Someone must instruct the casual passenger how to approach, ride in and leave a helicopter safely. Again, a trained heliport manager can relieve the pilot of this important job. Each passenger must be shown how to approach the helicopter from the front in a low crouch, carrying the hard hat under the arm if it does not have a chin strap, and holding tools low and at the side. Personnel should preferably wear goggles. Those people having none should face away as the helicopter lands or takes off to reduce the chance of eye damage. After receiving the pilot's okay, passengers approach the helicopter from the front, crouching low. They deposit their tools on the ground next to the cargo sling, enter the ship, and attach their seat belts. The heliport manager properly loads the tools, checks the seat belts, and gives final instructions on safety to the passengers. Before takeoff, the pilot makes a final inspection to be certain all seat belts are properly attached and that there are no loose items in the cab of the helicopter. After clearing with the air traffic manager and checking to be certain no one is in the path of the helicopter, the heliport manager then gives his okay to the pilot and signals the helicopter into the air. If there is no wind sock or other indicator at the helispot, Dirt should be thrown into the air to show the pilot the wind direction. Arm signals can also be used. The helispot manager helps bring the helicopter in safely. He places his back to the wind. His outstretched arms indicate wind direction. He uses standard arm signals in guiding the pilot to the prepared helispot pad. All seat belts must remain buckled until the pilot has completed his landing and signals his OK. A trained helispot manager can again be of important help to the pilot 
by assisting passengers to unbuckle their seat belts and instructing them how to leave the ship safely to the front. He also unloads the tools, placing them temporarily beside the skid of the helicopter so as to reduce downtime of the ship. He then checks on the location of personnel in the area and signals the pilot to take off when it is safe to do so. The safe loading of cargo is an art that can be practiced only by trained men. Cans for carrying liquid should either be completely full or empty. The sloshing of a partially filled can may upset the balance of the helicopter in flight. Cargo must be loaded carefully. The heaviest objects must be placed as close to the center of gravity of the helicopter as possible, which normally means on the inboard side of the cargo rack and close to the main rotor structure. Objects must be loaded so as to prevent shifting of the load. Cargo nets help assure that all objects remain in the rack. Finally, elastic binders secure the entire load. Remember, the final check is the responsibility of the pilot. While reconnoitering, there are many things the observer can do to assist the pilot in a safe operation. Don't assume anything. Be certain the pilot is aware of power and telephone lines, tall snags and trees, and other aircraft. Two pairs of eyes are definitely better than one in helicopter operations. Direct the pilot by hand signals so that there will be no misunderstanding as to where you would like him to go. Remember, the pilot is the final responsibility. He may sometimes find it necessary to deny your request to land at a designated location or to fly into a certain area. Most of the points on safety included in this film are discussed in the report Safety Rules for Hell Attack, written by Jim Murphy and published by the Pacific Southwest Forest and Range Experiment Station in Berkeley, California. These are the five main elements of helicopter safety, a well-maintained helicopter, a pilot experienced in low-altitude mountain flying, a well-located and well-equipped heliport or helispot, a trained heliport manager, and the casual passenger. A breakdown in safety practices in any one of these elements can cause your helicopter operation to lose its efficiency and effectiveness, and above all, to lose lives.